to develop our set data abstraction, we're going to need to choose a representation. And we're going to try first to represent a set as a linked list using the link class we've already developed. Sets aren't just any linked list, they're a linked list without any repeated elements. So proposal one is that a set is represented by a linked list that contains no duplicates. If we want to know whether a set is empty, we assume that this s is a link instance or link.empty, and link.empty is the only empty set. Now we need to define a function that tells us whether a value is contained within a set. So after we have a set represented as a linked list, 1, 3, 2, we can ask whether s contains the value 2, and contains should return true, because there it is right there. How would we define that? So here's our link class from a previous lecture. We also have a filter link function that returns elements in E for S, as long as F applied to E is true for each of those elements. And we have extend link, which takes two linked lists and gives us one long linked list with all the elements of S, followed by all the elements of T. Okay, and then here's our definition of sets as unsorted sequences. An empty set is just link.empty, and contains assumes that we're representing S as a linked list, but we don't know anything about the order of its elements. And so we need to define the contains function, which takes in a set and a value and tells us whether that value is in the set. If the set is empty, then the value is most certainly not in the set. Otherwise, we know that there's a first to s, and we can check whether that first is the value we're looking for. If so, we've found the value in the set. Now, if it's not the first element, but there are more elements, because this is not empty, then I need to make a recursive call. I make a recursive call to contains, which um, passes s.rest. Now, that's a representation of the whole set, except for one of the elements. And we'll pass in v to see if s.rest contains v. Our duck test passes because s does not contain 5, but it does contain 2. Now, how long did it take to perform these operations? Figuring out whether a set is empty is constant time. But figuring out whether v is contained within s really depends on where v appears in s. But I'd call that theta n, as long as we assume that v either does not appear in s, or it appears in some random location, because the order is arbitrary. So here, when we say theta n, we're actually describing the average amount of time that it takes to find a value in a set s of length n, assuming that that value is either not there or it appears in some arbitrary location that's distributed uniformly at random among the possible elements of S. That's a long way of saying you got to search the whole list in order to figure out whether V is in there or not. What other operations might we perform? Well, here's a definition of a join. It takes a set S and a value V. If S already contains V, then the adjoined set is the same as the original set. Otherwise, we need to build a new set represented as a linked list, which has v in it. This is theta n for the same reason that contains is theta n. You have to search through s to figure out whether v is there, element by element. How about intersecting two sets, set 1 and set 2? Well, one way we can do it is to define a new function called inset2, which takes a value and asks whether set2 contains that value. Then we filter set1 for all the elements that are also in set2. So this returns the elements x for which inset2x returns a true value as a linked list, so we maintain our representation. But the time in order to compute this intersection is n squared, 
because we're performing the contains operation, which is order n, and we're doing it for every element in set 1. This expression applies if we assume both set 1 and set 2 are size n. If they were different sizes, m and n, then we'd write theta m times n. Finally, here's the union of set 1 and set 2. One way to take a union is to find all the elements that are in 1 but not in 2 and add them to whatever's already in 2. Now, we're not going to mutate set 1 and set 2 in any way. Instead, we're going to construct a new set, and we'll do that by defining a function that tells us what elements are not in set 2. Apply that to everything in set 1. So now we have the elements that are in set 1 but not in set 2. If we call extend link, that builds us a new linked list with all the elements in set 1 but not in set 2, followed by all the elements in set 2. This will have no repeats in it, but will have all the elements that were either in set 1 or set 2. So, um, remember that extend link returns a linked list containing all elements in set 1, not set 2, followed by all elements in set 2, which is another theta n squared operation. And the theta n squared part happens right here in the filter link. Now there's also a linear time theta n operation in building up this extended link, but we never have theta n squared plus n. That's just the same as theta n squared.